So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the game of Brick Breaker. Let's do it. Um, in this, uh, for this tutorial, I give you some starter code, which um, you can grab from here. There's two different classes, okay? Um, you know, class one here is just called board, is called a starter, and the other, second one is called board. And when you run this code from the starter, you should run the main method, and you'll get um, just this plain board here. Nothing happens. Um, let's let's go ahead and change this around a little bit. Okay. Um, you know, here's your your width and your height. Um, there's this in game variable which we're going to make false and down here I have some uh, mouse click so let's look when you click the mouse press we're going to change there's a message that displays the screen we'll say game on that means the game has started when you click the board and we'll say in game equals true all right so if we compile that let's just make sure that runs Click the screen and it says game on. Um, one other thing I'm noticing here is uh, we're moving kind of slow. We want our animation delay, make that something like 20. Okay, that'll make it go much faster. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move quick here to add something. So I've actually added this brick class um, that is very simple. It's just gonna help us keep track of our bricks. Um, the, we're gonna have an array of bricks and we need their X and Y and their width and their height. So that's all that we do here is just track those variables. There's nothing else to this class, okay? Um, so let's go back to everything else we're doing in this board class. Um, so the next thing is I wanna add some class variables. I'm gonna hit you with a, a bunch of them here and I'll, I'll kinda go over um, what they are. So up at the top here where we have our, our variables declared, I'm going to add a bunch more and I'll, I'll kind of go over. I just put in a bunch. I copied and pasted them here. So BX and BY, that's going to be the ball that's moving around the screen. That's its X and Y starting position. Um, then we have the speed for how it's going to move on the X axis and the Y axis. And these are kind of arbitrary. You can mess around with them. I, I just made them uh, four and five to start with. That's going to be the width of the ball. Um, we're going to make an array of bricks. And I'm just doing 24. We're going to have like three rows of eight. You can mess around with that number. I have this parallel array that's going to keep track of whether we should be showing the brick or not. Um, if it gets hit by the ball, then we don't show it. Um, paddle X and paddle Y, um, that's the starting position. It's going to be kind of halfway um, across in the x-axis and down near the bottom of the screen. Um, and then this is just the width and the height. Again, you can tweak that to fit your needs. And then we're going to keep track of whether the paddle is moving right or left. We, you know, at the start of the game, it shouldn't be moving at all. Um, but then we will go ahead and move that eventually. Um, and I'll show you that momentarily. But let's, um, there's a couple things we need to do in the, uh, in the constructor class. Um, let me show you that real quick. Um, so what we, what the key thing we want to do in the constructor class is, I'll do it at the very bottom here, is we want to, um, we want to be able to set our, um, set our bricks. Um, we're going to set their position. So I'm going to say the first brick is going to start at X of 20 and Y and 20, so the top left-hand corner of the screen. Um, this is a little counter. I'll show you why we use that in a second. So we're going to go through all the bricks, um, in all the array bricks, and add a new brick um, object to that spot. And so we're going to have the X and Y position, and we're just going to make them a width of 50 and height of 10. Again, you can change that if you want. Show brick is going to be equal to true at the start of the game. You're going to show them all. Um, and now we're going to move to the right side of the screen. Every time we add a brick, we don't want them right on top of each other, so we're going to move it over 55. And 55 because you want to have a little space in between it because they're only 50 in width. And then every time we get to a multiple of 8, we're going to reset the brick's um, X position back over to the left, and then we're going to go down 
20. So otherwise, it would just keep going this way across the screen, right? Um, and so that's that allows us to have our three rows on this part right here. Um, and then we just increment this count. Um, I have that because if we start at zero, which we need to for the array, this will um, right away break at the very beginning of the uh, program. So I use this separate count variable that's set to one. Um, so uh, that's great. And so we're not going to see anything on the screen yet. We, can, we need to do a little bit in our paint method to get this to work. So let me show you. Let's see if we can get at least the bricks to show on the screen. So I'm going to go, we're going to go down to our paint method. Um, I'll go right under this message area. I'm going to hit, um, I'm going to have this for loop in here. Again, very similar to the for loop above. Um, and if show brick is equal to true, then we're going to show that brick. And we're just calling brick i dot x. Brick I, and, you know, we're making a rectangle. And these are coordinates. Um, brick i dot x, brick i dot y, and brick i width, and brick i height. Um, and so if we run this, we should get some bricks showing on the screen. Yeah, there we go. So there's our three rows of eight bricks. Perfect. That gets that started. Um, let's, let's move on to, uh, we'll show our paddle to the screen. Uh, very similar thing, but we only have one paddle, so we don't need that to be in a for loop. Uh, and we're just doing paddle X, paddle Y, paddle width, paddle height, right? Um, and, oh, we have, um, we're going to show our ball to the screen, too. So I'm going to grab this little oval, and this will be our ball, right? And that's just BX, BY, and ball width. And since it's a circle, ball width is the same as the height, right? And we want it to be a... Um, a symmetrical circle, right? Um, all right, so let's let's get the the paddle moving. Um, we're going to use. Uh, we don't want it to be able to move unless the game is on. So we'll put that in our in-game if statement here. And so now we have if paddle right is you know that basically reads like that. If you don't put the this part in, it says well if it's true then do this. So this is the same as this. Um, then we're going to add one to the x value. If pad left is true, we're going to subtract five from the um, x value. This isn't doing anything until we actually um, connect this with the um, keystrokes at the bottom. So I'm going to show you uh, some of the code for that. So if we go down to um, key pressed, um, I'm just going to actually erase this part here and put in my own. So 39 happens to be the right arrow. 37 is the left arrow. And you can test that out if you want by uncommenting this and uh, pressing the keystrokes. But anyway, so the, if we press the right arrow, then pad right should be equal to true. If we press the left, then pad left. If we press the left arrow, then pad left should be equal to true. But um, this is the key release here. And so I'm going to say if pad right. Um, I'm sorry, if we release the key, if this, this will be activated, and pad right should be set to false, and pad left should be set to false as well. So anytime we release the key, we make sure that both of them are uh, set back to false. We don't want it to keep moving, and I'll show you what that looks like. So we have the ball on the screen. So I have to click in here. It says game on. Now I can move my paddle pretty smooth and I could tweak that to make it faster if you want um, all right so let's let's get a little bit more moving we're um, we're pretty close to uh, uh, getting the bulk of this done oh so I'm gonna make a new method and here I'll show you what I'm gonna do there actually I'm just gonna grab this whole thing I'm gonna throw a lot at you right now I'm sorry but I'll explain everything in detail. All right, so I'm going to create a new method called um, ball bounce. And, uh, I wish I put that. I'll put that right underneath of our paint method. Put it right in here. Um, so there's a lot going on here, but most of it's just dealing with the ball bouncing off of objects. Um, 
and we want to call this method in um, in our in game. I'm going to put it right in here, just semicolon at the end, and so it's just public void ball bounce, and so. Basically, what this is saying, hey, if the ball x is greater than the ball width, or if it's less than zero, which means that would be on this side of the screen, ball width would be on this side of the screen. We need it to bounce off the wall, so we change the x-axis. Um, if it's less than zero on the y-axis, that means the top of the screen, we need it to bounce and change direction. So we're, that's why we times it by a negative one to change the direction um, on the x or the y-axis. Um, if it's uh, the, the y-axis, the ball y, is greater than the board height, then you could have a mechanism for losing a life. I'll leave that up to you to do. Uh, or like you should lose points or something. But then you need to restart or um, regenerate the ball on the screen. So I put it at its starting position. You could have it randomized on the x-axis if you want. Um, uh, the next thing I'm showing you here is our if statement for um, the ball hitting the paddle. And so we have the, the x value of the ball plus its width. If that's greater than the paddle's x, um, then we're going to change the, you know, well, actually all of these things need to be true. Um, then also we're checked to see, um, so you, you can imagine that we have a, um, a rectangle on the screen, you know, what, that's what our paddle is. The ball needs to be within that rectangle for it to change direction. So we're looking to see that it's, you know, it's greater than the left-hand side of the uh, paddle, but it also needs to be less than the right-hand side of the paddle, which is paddle X plus paddle um, W, the width of it. And then we also need to make sure it's in the constraints of the, the height of the paddle. So we see if the Y value for our ball is, um, is less than, or actually is greater than the paddle's Y value, then it's in that, it would be in that rectangle. But you want to make sure it's also less than the paddle's y value plus its height so the bottom of the paddle right so it's you know basically just making sure it's in that rectangular box if it's in that rectangular box then we change the y it bounces off the paddle right um, you could do all kinds of, of fancy kind of physics here um, but i'm just going to do uh, a straight you know change of the y-axis uh, for the um, ball uh, and then the next thing is we do the same thing, that same um, if statement. This is all the same if statement, but now we're seeing if the ball hits off the brick. So we're checking the brick X instead of the paddle X. This is exactly the same, except it's for the bricks. Um, and the only thing that's added is this part here. We don't want to check to see if it's bouncing off the brick. We only want to check to see if it's bouncing off the brick if that brick is deemed showing true. So sh if show brick is true, then we want it to bounce off it. Otherwise, it should go right through it, and we won't even show the brick to the screen um, if it's not uh, true. Um, then, But if it is, we change the direction, and then we remove that brick from the screen by just setting that brick uh, show brick I to, to equal to false. And lastly, we move the ball by just adding it to its x speed and its y speed. Um, that is, a, 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 we're almost done this. Let's see, let's see what we got working. Bounces off the paddle nice. Oh, there, wow. We got rid of a lot of bricks there. Nice. And so what you would want to do right there is when you all the show bricks are equal to false, um, then you would probably want to display something like winner or maybe have them regenerate and make the ball go faster for the second round. Um, that's up to you. Um, but that's it. That's a brick breaker in a nutshell.